Hi, I'm Luan Gunasekara, and I work for the Melbourne Bioinformatics Group at the University of Melbourne. And today, I'd, on behalf of my colleagues, I'd like to present the Galaxy Health Chart version 4, uh, which is a chart that has been in development for a while now. And uh, uh, we'd like to present some of the latest work that has gone in, as well as give you some background as to what uh, a health chart is and when you might want to use it and for what scenarios it might be suitable for. And also take a look at some of the new and exciting features that have been introduced and uh, look at where uh, the chart is heading in future. To start off, let's have a quick recap of what a Kubernetes Helm chart is. So a Helm chart is an installable package for Kubernetes. It's uh, much like a Docker Compose file uh, in that it describes multiple containers and how they're inter interconnected. Uh, but in addition, it also uh, is deployable as a versioned package that you can uh, deploy, upgrade, and roll back uh, when uh, necessary as a unit. So it makes it very easy to manage a complex application as a simple uh, as a single unit. And it's as simple as saying, uh, Helm install Galaxy, for example, and you can say Helm upgrade Galaxy to get to the next version of Galaxy or Helm rollback Galaxy to uh, downgrade Galaxy. So uh, it's a much, much more convenient way to interact and manage a complex application. The Helm chart was first released in 2016, and it has gone through many iterations. And today, it is uh, a fairly mature uh, package, and it has been deployed in a wide variety of situations, which we will go into uh, in the latter half part of this presentation. Um, let's take a quick look at how you would install the Helm chart on an instance and get a Galaxy instance up and running. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to SSH into this machine, uh, which is a Ubuntu uh, machine I launched on the cloud. And uh, it has a running Kubernetes cluster that I have pre-configured. Uh, typically, to install a Kubernetes cluster, you can use something like K3S, which will have a which will create a running cluster for you in around 30 seconds. Um, so once we've configured and uh, got a cluster running with Helm installed and uh, boot control and everything in place. Uh, it's, the first thing we have to do is to add the repository for the Galaxy Helm chart. So I'm going to do that. Uh, the command is to Helm repo add and uh, the URL to the repository. So we're going to do that first, which adds the Galaxy project repository. And then let's do Helm repo update to fetch the latest updates from that repository. Uh, once we do that, uh, we can then finally get to the stage of installing the Galaxy Helm chart. So that's a simple matter of running Helm install and the uh, chart that we want to install and the options we want to set. So in this case, I will enable CVMFS and also deploy CVMFS, so uh, the, the CVMFS uh, storage manager and uh, define the storage class, which is how the persistence should be managed uh, to be MFS. Uh, so once I run this command, uh, within roughly three minutes, uh, we will have a uh, Galaxy up and running. Next, let's check whether the Helm chart is properly deployed. So I'm going to simply list the containers, check whether the Galaxy containers are present. And we see that uh, the Galaxy web workflow and job containers uh, are happy deployed. The uh, Postgres database has been deployed for Galaxy and uh, the CVFS plugin handlers have also been deployed. So in around uh, three minutes, we should uh, expect to see a running Galaxy version with the full tool set, which is comparable to uh, this Galaxy star. So um, I'm going to switch over to the browser uh, once it's ready, and we can access the Galaxy instance. I'm now going to try and access that instance that we just deployed. And we see that Galaxy is up and running, and it has a fairly comprehensive tool set. We can uh, run some jobs straight away. And uh, we see that uh, they, are, they run and it's instantly functioning. So when and why should you use this chart? This term chart has been designed for systems administrators who want to take advantage of containerization. So you can start off with uh, 
perhaps a simple out of the box installation uh, it takes less than five minutes to go from uh, nothing at all, just basic bare bones Kubernetes cluster to a working version of Galaxy with CDMFS, the database itself, and all other uh, requirements installed. Uh, and uh, the chart is designed to scale horizontally uh, as required. Uh, it allows you to have zero downtime maintenance, and uh, it's the main Docker image is a fairly size optimized image of less than 250 megabytes compressed. And the chart itself continues to evolve and keep pace with the latest versions of Galaxy. So you might ask the question, why Kubernetes over other options, such as, for example, Ansible? Uh, so we think the main reason goes back to containerization itself. Containerizing applications offer significant benefits than the alternative, which is to treat your entire operating system as the oyster. Uh, containerized applications are isolated, and you know exactly what files are mapped into a container, what ports are exposed, and what inputs are fed into it. So it's more modular and comprehensible uh, compared to the alternative. Secondly, you can avoid a lot of the conflicts that happen uh, due to shared libraries and so on. You get better security. You can, the, the container itself becomes portable. So you can uh, uh, move it to another operating system or upgrade your operating system without fear of breaking any applications on the system. And uh, of course, reproducibility is also a significant factor. So if you accept containerization as a fundamentally better approach to managing applications, Kubernetes is a natural evolution of that. So with Kubernetes, you any, any containerized application at some point will need to be have some kind of lifecycle management. It will need to be probably distributed and managed across multiple machines as you scale. You would need service discovery, load balancing, self-healing, storage provisioning, and zero downtime maintenance, all of which Kubernetes provides. The, of course, it comes at a cost, which is that, yes, there is, additional, there is an additional layer of abstraction. It does have a significant learning curve, and it simplifies certain things but complicates certain other things. So there's no free lunch, but by and large, a lot of these problems that were beyond the reach of small teams now become accessible. And a lot of the knowledge and practices and best practices become far more transferable across Kubernetes platforms. In fact, there are ready-made packages for a lot of the tasks that a typical administrator might want to do in very uh, well packaged and portable formats. So next, let's take a look at some of the new features that have been added to the chart. Let's start off with the high availability Postgres operator. So uh, an operator is a Kubernetes native way to extend its API. So you can, uh, so that you have a more natural way to interact with Kubernetes. So what you see in the right, on the right here is an example of that, where we define an object of type PostgreSQL. So if you define a Postgres database this way, you can just define it simply, the version you want, the size you want, and Kubernetes will start to understand that type natively by delegating it to the operator. So uh, custom resource definitions of this type, or call, they're called CRDs, are implemented by operators. So uh, not only is it more natural to interact with Kubernetes that way, uh, operators also typically provide far more automation. Uh, so the, as the name itself implies, the idea is to automate uh, or replicate some of the typical uh, actions that an operator might take, uh, such as uh, replication, fault tolerance, uh, it might, uh, even, even major version upgrades can be automated simply by changing the version, the operator will take care of the upgrade process. To demonstrate high availability Postgres, let's go back to our freshly installed Galaxy Helm chart. So here I'm in Rancher, which is a graphical browser for Kubernetes clusters, where you can see the containers that have been deployed uh, as part of this chart. And uh, we can see that there is a Galaxy Postgres uh, container. And if you were to go into this container and look at the logs, we can see that this is, uh, this is the leader uh, database pod. And there's at the moment only one uh, replica. So, uh, so this is just, I mean, out of the box, this is, uh, it, it's, just, it's a simple single replica setup, but uh, uh, let's just uh, scale it up by using the Kubernetes replica feature. So we're just going to scale it up to another replica and we can see that the 
so a new pod came up. And if you go into that new container, we see that uh, it is a secondary pod and that it is uh, following the leader pod. So with that, we now have a two replica uh, cluster. Uh, and uh, Galaxy, if we go back to Galaxy, we, it continues to be uh, functional. And let's see what happens if we were to uh, delete the original database pod. So if you delete the original one, uh, the secondary replica will immediately be promoted to the leader by the operator. Uh, and we can see that in a few seconds, it has become the leader. Uh, and, uh, the, and in the meantime, Kubernetes has also automatically restarted the deleted pod because it needs to maintain two replicas. And if you go back and check the logs of the original pod, it has now become a secondary. Uh, and in the meantime, Galaxy continues to function uh, in between uh, all of that. Uh, see that uh, data is intact. So let's go back to uh, the Postgres replica and then scale it down back to one. And then uh, automatically the original uh, the original leader will again uh, reassume uh, the leader. So all of that was completely handled by the operator. We didn't really have to do anything. Um, and uh, it's just out of the box functions in a very sane way. Uh, and the Postgres operator has a lot of functions that uh, a human operator uh, would, where, that a human operator would do, such as, for example, it can do a database upgrade um, or even major version upgrades are possible simply by modifying uh, the custom resource definition uh, so all of that is uh, highly simplified uh, and managed automatically uh, by the operator. Another new feature that has been added is bundled monitoring and metrics and visualizations. So the moment you set up a Galaxy instance of any size, you probably want to know what's going on with the cluster and have some visibility into what tools are running, what kind of uh, throughput you're seeing, what kind of workflows and uh, uh, tools are being executed the most, uh, how many users or workflows have been run, and so on. So a lot of work has already gone into this in the Use Galaxy Star Federation, and we have reused that work and bundled it in with the chart, so that now when you activate metrics on the chart, you will all of that data will automatically be dumped into a influx database, and you can subsequently visualize it in Grafana. The Grafana dashboards are also bundled with the Helm chart, so that the moment you activate it, it will be available in Grafana. Another area where a lot of effort has been put into is to increase the robustness and quality control of the Helm chart. So, uh, so towards this end, uh, we integrated GitHub Actions. Uh, and Alex has done a lot of the work here for transitioning the old Travis-based testing we had in the Helm chart to GitHub Actions, where the, not only is it uh, integration tested, it's also automatically version bumped uh, and packaged and bundled uh, whenever there's a commit. So this makes the process of updates much faster and uh, also ensures that we have a continuous delivery process built into it with the GitHub style workflow. A problem which has been significantly thorny for the deployment methods is interactive tools. Uh, interactive tools have been notoriously difficult to set up. They are very difficult to, it's very difficult to get them to run robustly and scalably and uh, requires a significant amount of effort. So uh, with the new Helm chart, there's a lot of effort has gone into automating this process. You can listen to Alex's talk on this, where using the features of Kubernetes, it has been possible to reliably uh, deploy interactive tools uh, across, a, across any Kubernetes cluster. Another area which has received significant attention is faster startup time while loading a complete tool set. So uh, this has become, this has been particularly important for Anvil in particular, where Galaxy instances are lo launched on demand and startup time is, is a significant concern. So uh, there's been a lot of work that has gone into uh, making these tool configurations downloadable as archives incrementally so that, uh, so that you have the fastest possible startup and uh, Alex is putting some work to make this go down from six minutes to uh, almost a 40% improvement 
uh, by using bundle tar archive, which can be used as a customizable alternative to CDMFS. Health checks have also been improved uh, and uh, they've been extended to cover not just the web handler, but also the web and workflow handlers. So by using health checks, we make sure that the, these handlers are responding as expected. And in fact, uh, by Kubernetes, it automatically restart failed handlers. So we have this double advantage of uh, not only knowing that your application is running, but also recovering from faults. So in summary, the Helm chart has seen a lot of work going to it to be fully functional out of the box, particularly in scenarios which may be harder to set up traditionally. So for example, interactive tools or zero downtime configuration updates or high availability databases and so on, uh, which require significant experience and expertise uh, to set up normally uh, is now bundled into this chart, which can be set up in a matter of five minutes on any Kubernetes cluster. It's also designed to have no single point of failure, and it makes it very suitable for these kinds of uh, horizontally scalable production grade requirements. So taking a look at the future, as the Galaxy's Helm chart continues to mature, uh, we hope to see it being used in a wider variety of situations situations and uh, environments. And we hope to hope that the community will keep contributing those changes and improvements back into the Helm chart. Um, and we'd also like to leave you with a thought about Galaxy itself. So as Galaxy has progressively become more complex over time and accrued new functionality, uh, we think the deployment strategies also will need to adapt. So. Um, the question is, should containers be the primary mechanism or the recommended mechanism for deploying Galaxy? And if so, uh, to what extent does it simplify Galaxy's environment? I think this is a discussion that is worth having and investigating because it could potentially simplify the environment and lead to a reduction in complexity. Um, the interactive tools are a good example of this. And we should hopefully be able to promote reusability and portability across a wider variety of environments by standardizing on the fabric of deployment. And we think that the suitable fabric might be Kubernetes precisely because it has, it is seeing a, a lot of adoption across the industry and uh, academia. So, which leaves us with the question, can we perhaps even re-architect Galaxy as a container native application. So just something to potentially discuss during GCC. With that, uh, we'd like to conclude and thank you for your attention. Uh, if there are any questions as well as uh, we'll be around during the conference as well. So if you need any more information or help with setting, setting things up uh, and we'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.